from the Mercy One Studio. Be not afraid. Jesus is on the way to encounter you. Join Father Fabian Moncada every Tuesday at 9 a.m. on Iowa Catholic Radio. Also tune in Sundays at 1030 a.m. for Be Not Afraid in Spanish. Now, hear the good news and be not afraid. Be Not Afraid is underwritten by Associated Ophthalmologists and Dream Dirt Farm Real Estate and Auction Services. Good morning. Welcome to Iowa Catholic Radio, 1150 AM, 88.5 FM, 94.5 FM. Father PJ, good morning. Good morning. We have, in this coming week, one of the great saints of the Holy Catholic Church, St. Gregory the Great. Mm -hmm. So let us begin with our prayer. O God, who care for your people with gentleness and rule them in love, through the intercession of Pope St. Gregory, and though we pray with a spirit of wisdom those to whom you have given authority to govern, that the flourishing of a holy flock may become the eternal joy of the shepherds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And the Father, and in the Son, and in the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, we have an agreement great preacher here so you came from your formation as a good <laughs> homilist came from that great formation if uh, somebody asking you what is the key to have an, a great homily what do you say jesus because <laughs> right. there's 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 a a famous uh, pulpit in a lutheran church in germany that that has written on the inside so the people can't see it but the preacher can see it uh, preacher of grace, if you have not yet said the name of the Lord Jesus, you may not resume your seat. So is somebody clapping after you delivered the homily, that clapping go to Jesus? <laughs> That's right. And the Holy Spirit, not to you. That's the move. Because we cannot presume that we are <laughs> performing a role that is only capable by the Holy Spirit. Gregory is one of these people like St. John Paul II in our own day or like Albert the Great in the 12th, 13th centuries. Um, who was known as the Great even in their own day, which is kind of an embarrassment for them. That oh, wasn't wow. that wasn't really what they were after, and that and that's you know in some ways that's the genius of the saints, right? Is that is that the good that other people recognize in them? It's not that the saint can't recognize it, but that it's it's not about them. They're simply disinterested in other people thinking of their own greatness. And at the same time, Father, the gentle action of the Holy Spirit when you are preaching and touch the heart of the people. Is to move into Jesus, That's not right. to your will or to your uh, pastoral approach. You might say that the whole the the whole act of the church, really every single thing that we do, is oriented towards reconciling us to God and to one another. Um, he entrusted to us the ministry of reconciliation. Um, in the rite of penance, it says at the very front end that the the ministry of reconciliation belongs by right to the whole church. The ministry of absolution and forgiveness is is that proper to the bishop and the priest. But the ministry of reconciliation, of restoring right relationship, belongs to everybody. So I often tell our deacons that when when they preach, they stand as much a chance of bringing someone back to God as we do. What happens is the preacher preaches and moves one to conversion so that they approach the sacrament of penance, moves one to conversion so that they go to be reconciled with their spouse or their kids or their friends or their neighbors, moves to conversion and so causes them to reform behavior and live better, more wholesome, authentic Christian lives. So this pedagogic element has to be in a very action that we are working to the people of God as well. Sometimes we, we miss that. We are not teaching the church teaching, but we are the deliverers of these teachings. That's exactly right. St. Gregory is known in the East um, not as the great, but as the dialogist, the dialoguer. Um, and that's because in most of his writings, he writes in the form of a sort of a Socratic dialogue. So, so, okay. it's a, so it's a particular kind of genre. It's a particular way of writing. But the reason it's important is because he always gave voice to his naysayers. He always gave voice to his critics. And so uh, much like St. Thomas Aquinas would do several hundred years later, he felt it was important to know his opponent's positions at least as well as his own so that he, if, he, if his position was really true – He'd need to know what their objection was and why, why it happened to be mistaken. He was also in, very instrumental in helping Rome and Constantinople, which were kind of in a fight at the time, 
um, in, in achieving at least a degree of reconciliation precisely because um, the, the tensions that they had did not need to presume bad intent on the other party. And I think this is really important for us. Somebody offends us. Somebody does something that bothers us. Our, 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 our kids do something that we think is wrong. We presume there's ill will. Oftentimes there's no ill will at all. There's just a lot of mistake making, mistake making, or um, or 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 uncontrolled vice going on that simply needs to be corrected. So you have been describing an, a spiritual battle that each of us has been living with a evil one that sometimes is not our will and intention to be a bad guy. May I use that expression? That's right. Versus an a spiritual battle to keep in control ourselves. That's exactly right. So that what part of what we're struggling with, you know, St. Paul frames it in terms of the world, the flesh, and the devil. Not that the world is evil or the flesh is evil, but that the way that we relate to them can kind of muck us up sometimes, right? And what St. Gregory would point to, um, especially in uh, the Moralia and, and some of his moral treatises, would be that um, we struggle against sin and our own ten- temptation to sin, tendency to sin. We struggle with actual diabolical intervention, trying to get us to fall into sin. But we also struggle sometimes just as much with God in order to surrender to divine providence, to believe that God really and genuinely has our back. And that oftentimes it's the failure first to surrender to divine providence, which leads to the failure when it comes to the flesh and the world, because we get frustrated or angry or afraid or want a quick relief or or, or, or an easy out. Very interesting. So we are Iowa Catholic Radio, Be Not Afraid, talking about St. Gregory the Great. Be Not Afraid. Thank you, Dream Dirt Farm Real Estate and Auction, for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio and Be Not Afraid. Dream Dirt Farm Real Estate and Auction is a licensed, accredited, and experienced farm brokerage and auction company. Learn more at dreamdirt.com, including their online auction house, FarmBid, at bid.dreamdirt.com. Dream Dirt Farm and Equipment Auction Services, Farm Auctions, done right. Thank you, Big Red Q Quick Print, for underwriting the sports report. Family owned and operated since 1980, Big Red Q Quick Print is a full service print shop ready to help you with all your printing needs with speed and accuracy. Forms, manuals, brochures, letterhead, envelopes, business cards, custom invitations, design, and bindery. Big Red Q Quick Print, located across from Merle Hay Mall. Online at bigredq des Moines.com. Big Red Q Quick Print. We make printing easy. Is it time for a new roof? Then it could be time for you to get to know Bell Construction. Bell Construction is a roofing company entering its 30th year of business. They specialize in residential re-roofs, like commercial jobs, and have the experience to meet all of your roofing needs with personal service. With Bell Construction, the owner will come to your home or place of business in person to inspect and ensure the quality of work that you deserve. They pride themselves in working with you on a personal basis and making sure you are satisfied. Bell Construction, 515-963-4494. What is the best gift ever? Giving a Catholic education is at the top of my list. Your contribution to CTO helps families send their children to our Catholic schools who otherwise could not afford it. In giving to CTO, you receive the best tax credits ever. Pledge or donate online at ctoiowa.org. The bottom line, it's for the kids and their future. Support for Dowling Catholic Sports on Iowa Catholic Radio is provided in part by Ashworth Vision Clinic with two licensed optometrists, Barbara Sheets, a Dowling graduate, and Dr. Greg Harper. The Ashworth Vision Clinic team provides complete eye exams, contact lenses, glasses, glaucoma testing, and pre- and post-operative care. Ashworth Vision Clinic is located at Ashworth and 60th Street in West Des Moines, 515-440-4610, ashworthvision.com. 515-440-4610, 515-440-4610, ashworthvision.com, Ashworth Vision Clinic. Welcome back to Be Not Afraid through Iowa Catholic Radio. So, Father, we are enjoying the solemnity, no, the, the feast of St. Gregory the Great. Mm-hmm. He invited us in a very deeply experience of teaching about faith to live in a more transparent our life. However, sometimes we need to reconcile ourselves with God. And the best matter as a Christian and believers into the Catholic Church, we have the sacrament of reconciliation. Mm-hmm. So based on that data, so how would you experience 
as confessor in Christ the King. So <laughs> we're really fortunate at Christ the King. Um, we several, I don't know, maybe a year ago, we started having confessions daily. Um, and, and coming out of the pandemic, um, we shifted schedules and stuff. But we hear confessions every night at 6 uh, following the 530 Mass. And the last, uh, the last several weeks, we have heard confessions consistently two, two and a half hours a night wow. every night of the week. They've been lined up literally down the block. I've got people uh, have been taking pictures of the line, um, and that's often with two of us listening, both Father Father Ronaldo and I. So, um, so, so the Lord is doing something, moving in the hearts of His people. I think, especially during the lockdown, people um, had to sit with themselves and really come to grips, either with past sins or past difficulties, or left to their own devices, they discovered new things that they could get themselves into, and they recognized the need for forgiveness. I think also, um, you know, mass feels very different right now because of all the restrictions. Confession, um, depending on where you're at, but I, I think in general, it comes closest to feeling the same. So it provides a sense of normalcy and stability, which is part of what regular confession is meant to do in the life of the church. The frequent uh, comment when the people arrive to the confession is, why I need to confess my my faults to somebody that probably it's, uh, a lot more senior than me. Mm -hmm. And a secondly, certain scary experience to talking about confessions. Why that kind of inner debates in the souls today to approach the second reconciliation? So the second one is really important. The first one, I suppose, needs to be answered. But the second one is really important because it implies a moral problem. Um, we have a big problem in the world today with people's inability to acknowledge uh, guilt or fault. People just don't want to admit when they do things wrong, and they try and distance themselves from the act. So I have to work often, especially with the young, just to get them to say, I did something. So they'll come in and they'll say, you know, well, maybe sometimes I'm not, I'm not so nice to my sister. So you mean you fight with your sister? Yeah, I, I guess so. Say it. I fight with my sister. I really don't want to say that. Why don't you want to say oh. that? Well, because then it may see the problem. Or, you know, yes. maybe, maybe sometimes I don't always tell the truth. So you lied. Uh, they don't want to say I lied, right? It's really important for every single one of us to be able to say, I lied, I cheated, I stole, I fornicated, I whatever I did. Correct. Because until we own the act, we'll never be able to give it up. And that's not just true in confession. Like, that's like the premise of therapy, right? Like the whole move here is that you've got – Mr. Rogers says this, right? Anything that's mentionable is manageable. Anything that stays unmen unmentionable cannot be managed. And so so, so the the, the – the first natural value of confession is to simply be able to own our stuff. And if we can own our stuff, then we'll be able to get rid of that that's, that's unnecessary. In the order of grace, the reason that we need to confess sins to a priest or a bishop is because Christ chose to mediate grace through other people. If you've got a problem with it, probably you should take it up with Jesus. But the, I mean, the problem is, right, we only have this, not only, we primarily have this objection when it comes to confession. But, like, people don't get real grumpy and say, well, you know, why, why do I got to why do I got to have a priest to rub oil on me? Can't I just put lotion on myself? Well, yes, but that's clears a different <laughs> thing, right? And so the so 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 the, the the problem here right is it's simply anxiety over guilt and not being willing to 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 own um that which is properly ours. Could we explore also that probably will be an spiritual battle for the person to do not recognize their own uh, faults and mistakes? Right. Be because uh, it's not easy. Also, we can presume that evil one doesn't like for the person to open completely the heart and mind for the uh, to the confessor sure. to express uh, healing later on through the absolution. That's right. So, 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 of course, you know, the last thing the devil wants is people to be honest in confession and stop sinning. And that, that, that it's like the, the sine qua non of his, uh, this is exactly what he doesn't want to have happen. So, so, um, so the, 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 what, what that then, um, obliges us to do as confessors and our people as penitents is to just create as open a space as we can have so that people feel comfortable letting it all go. It, it takes time. It takes practice. This is why frequent confession is important. You know, one of the things I tell people a lot is um, don't like, the, you know, the, the once a year thing is a minimum on purpose. I can't remember what I had for breakfast yesterday. So if I go more than a month, I'm not going to be able to keep track of what my stuff is. I, I sin too much. And, and if I can't keep track of what my sins are, then I'm not going to be able to name them, claim them, and then get over them. 
But if I go more frequently, if I go every month or six weeks or something like that, if I keep a little kind of prayer journal and keep track of where I fall down and where I get back up, then I stand a much better chance of authentic growth in the in the spiritual life oh. and real ongoing conversion. That That is very, very important. So also we can assume the confession or of my sins also help me to grow in a spiritual manner, a quotation mark, a spiritual direction to right. moving forward. That's exactly that right. That is one of the recommendations also for, fa for Padre Pio about this experience of the sacrament of reconciliation. What is the experience to receive the absolution in you, theological manner? Sure. So, so, so when the absolution is pronounced, the penitence is restored to the life of grace wow. and to the communion of the church. Um, and it's, and that's, that's the other reason it's important that it's a person that does this, because you're not only being reconciled to God sort of in the abstract, but to the Christian community in the concrete. And so you have to have the, the, the minister, the ambassador of that community who does it. And when that happens, there's a relief like none other. Iowa Catholic Radio, Be Not Afraid, talking about the sacrament of reconciliation. Thank you to Mercy College of Health Sciences, downtown Des Moines, for underwriting our show, The Uncommon Good, with me, Bo Bonner. And I'm Bud Marr. A degree from Mercy College provides endless possibilities. Students have access to patients with complex medical conditions, state-of-the-art medical facilities, highly motivated healthcare professionals, and classroom professors that transform them into servant leaders. You can start the programs in fall, spring, or summer. There are endless possibilities available online at mchs.edu slash kwky. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio's broadcast of Dowling Catholic Sports and Activities is provided by Kemen, a global ingredient manufacturer using science to transform the quality of life for 80% of the world. Kemen is on the leading edge of molecular science, manufacturing more than 500 specialty ingredients for the human and animal health and nutrition, pet food, aquaculture, nutraceutical, food technologies, crop technologies, and textile industries. Kemen strives to sustainably transform the quality of life every day for 80% of the world with their products and services. Kemen, using science to transform the world. Online at Kemen.com. Since 1924, St. Vincent de Paul has been helping those less fortunate work towards self-sufficiency. Last year, St. Vincent de Paul helped over 20,000 individuals with food, clothing, and shelter, while also offering classes in financial literacy, high school completion, career readiness, and prisoner re-entry. svdpdsm.org, 515-282-8327. Shop, donate, volunteer, serve. This message was brought to you by Homemakers Furniture. It's happening. The Christ Our Life Catholic Regional Conference returns September 26th and 27th. Attend in person at Wells Fargo Arena or live stream. Go to ChristOurLifeIowa.com for tickets and more information. Hi, this is Joe Stopulus. Thank you to Construction Professionals for underwriting Man Up. Monday mornings at 9 on Iowa Catholic Radio. Construction Professionals, a Catholic family business built on a strong foundation. CPCustomHomes.com Welcome back to Iowa Catholic Radio. Be not afraid, Father PJ, Father Fabian. We're talking about the sacrament of reconciliation in the context of this coming Sunday's gospel. Father, one of the beauty encounters with the mercy of God is the prayer of absolution. Mm -hmm. God, the Father of mercies, through the death and the resurrection of his Son, has reconciled the world unto himself and sent the Holy Spirit among us for the forgiveness of sins. Through the ministry of the church, may God grant you pardon and peace, and I absolve you of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now, don't be confused. Nobody got absolved through the radio. <laughs> So that wasn't a freebie. It's a very good clarification. <laughs> but we wanted you to hear it because we hear it frequently and probably gloss over it. Don't hear most of the words, except maybe I absolve you of your sins. Yeah. And um, in 30 seconds, the whole of the Christian faith is, is summed up. Um, God as the Father of mercies, we're drawing on St. Paul, um, who, who reconciles us through the death and the resurrection of Jesus and acts in the church by the power of the Holy Spirit. So there's a little epiclesis there in the middle of the prayer. Beautiful. Just like the epiclesis at Mass. So just as the elements are changed at Mass, so the penitent is changed in the act of absolution. This is a, an, a, an, a very, very oppor opportunistic moment for the penance to open completely their hearts, their mind, to receive the embraced love of God and deliver you for any kind of suffering, 
any kind of pain created by the scene and make you free and happy. The uh, the formula changed uh, after Vatican II, and it was changed very deliberately because the preceding formula, of course, was spoken in Latin, so people couldn't usually understand it. And it was very, very juridical. So it, it sounded much more uh, like a, an IRS form or something. So, um, oh, okay. you know, I, 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 I absolve you of any pain of suspension or interdict under which you may be presently bound. Oh. Well... Mo- almost nobody was ever going to have that, right? And so it, it, it sounded very kind of removed and distant, and they wanted to kind of refocus us. So they created this very scriptural prayer so that, and, and, and harnessed it in the context of the liturgy. Part of the prayer is very, very old, but part of it is new, and it's, and it's new with, with sort of intent. Um, there are, however, different absolution formulas that exist in the church, that have existed in the church uh, in history, and that, and that still exist in the Eastern churches today. Um, but what they all tend to focus us on is the role of the the confessional as a place of healing? So the 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 the, the priest really is physician, um, acting in the person of Christ, the physician, so Christ the doctor, as it were, okay, um, sorry, and and then um, mercy. Um, that this is a tribunal of mercy. It's not a place of judgment or scolding. It's a it's a place of forgiveness and grace. So, Saint Matthew, in the chapter eighteen, verses fifteen to twenty, describe beautifully this coming Sunday. This word that help us to understand the sacrament of reconciliation. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. And if he refuses to listen to them, then tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on anything uh, on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. So where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. So, Father, to be honest to you, the first part, a little tricky to... <laughs> it's a little tricky ta- task for us. So... I think if that you, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listened to you, good for him. Right. <laughs> you got you have gained your brother. If not, so. Well, I think the first part of that is actually important because most of us land on the second part, which is what do I do if somebody doesn't do what I'm telling them to? Exactly. And then I have to go get other people. And then if they if they still don't do it, then we have to throw them out. And and that's because we have bad experiences and we remember bad things more than good things. Mm-hmm. But the but the first part of it is is really the fruit here. Go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. And if he listens to you, you have gained your brother. <laughs> I mean, the stakes are as high as another person. That's a big deal. It's not just you've 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 put a better idea in his head or he's you've learned him that you were right and he was wrong. Yeah, it is rather that you've gained life for your brother. That's nothing to shake a stick at. That's a big deal. I think w- what this really provides us, right, is a model for how this reconciliation that is expressed sacramentally in in the sacrament of penance um, is is made alive in the life of everyday Christians. Fraternal, sororal, paternal, filial correction is like the bread and butter of daily life. We all have to be open to being corrected by other people so long as there's a relationship of love and trust so that we know why they're doing so. And we all have to be willing to correct because the world gets messy and people get hurt and and we need to make sure that we're keeping the people we love safe. Is that is uh, basically agreement between families, you know? That's it. So somebody needs to keep in control. Somebody needs to call the alert and control that everybody needs to go and moving in in the same page. But why we have some struggles to forgiveness? You know, I think fundamentally we struggle to forgive be, because we're afraid of getting hurt again. Oh, um, it's okay. it's it's kind of the hangover of of that somebody is. else's sin, um, and you know it's 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 the line that's become very popular now, right? Hurt people, hurt people. So people that have been hurt are more likely to hurt themselves. Whenever we act out of a place of pain and discord, we're always going to create more pain and discord. Whereas if we act out of a place of forgiveness and mercy and love, we'll bring more of the same to the world. This is a and, a and a beautiful moment because sometimes many brothers and sisters have been in need of the forgiveness and receive also the absolution from God's pardon for all the sins. So, Father, we are approaching the ending of the program. I ask you your blessing and sending on. 
May the God who longs to give us all of his mercy bless, keep, and sustain each one of you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Be not afraid. Iowa Catholic Radio. Be not afraid. Jesus is on the way to encounter you. Join Father Fabian Moncada every Tuesday at 9 a.m. on Iowa Catholic Radio. Also tune in Sundays at 10.30 a.m. for Be Not Afraid in Spanish. Now, hear the good news and be not afraid. Be Not Afraid is underwritten by Associated Ophthalmologists and Dream Dirt, Farm Real Estate and Auction Services.